and therefore are delighted to be joined now by John Flesher, who's International Programme Director at Conservative Environment Network. It's an independent forum for conservatives who support net zero, nature restoration and resource security. I've underlined and said the word conservative quite loudly um, to A, let people know who you are, where you're coming from, but also you know what made uh, Rishi uh, change his mind and finally uh, decide to go. Does it matter to you that he's there? It does. I think Rishi Sunak's presence as the Prime Minister says something about the UK's position on these issues. I mean, he's not going as any old world leader. He's going as the the country who has held the um, COP presidency for the last three years now. And I think it says something about the UK's role that as we hand that presidency on to Egypt, we're proud of what we've achieved. And I think the UK has achieved a lot in that time. But we need to make sure that that action is kept up. And you made the point about other countries. I think that's exactly what he needs to be doing when he's there. He needs to be leaning on the countries that haven't done as much as the UK and say, this is what we need to achieve, build on the UK's record. There's a huge amount to achieve there and a huge amount of progress that's been made, but a huge amount more that needs to be made in addition to that. Yeah, principally by others, whereas there are other huge crises, and it's the main theme of our programme today on the economy at home. And, and the Observer newspaper makes the point that given the economic challenges uh, that we all face, Sunak's initial decision to stay and work on that autumn statement was widely applauded. Uh, now he's decided, no, no, I've done enough on that so I can go and do COP27. Uh, it also looks like one or two of the other papers have said as well as a kind of flip-flop. I mean, it's not the most impressive action, even if you applaud it. I, I think, if I may say, you're being a little, uh, a little unkind on the prime minister. There. I think in his it's defense, my job. Been, <laughs> well, it, it, is. it certainly is. That's very true. But I think he, I, I don't think it's a flip flop. But I, but I completely take your point about the importance of domestic economic matters. And I think what's really, really important that we get out of this summit and his attendance at this summit is making the link between those two situations. The, reason we've got sky high energy bills in this country, the reason why inflation's running riot, not just in the UK, but across Europe and across the world is because yeah. of the price of debt and the price of fossil fuels. And I think the message he needs to be making when he's going there, and I'm encouraged by the comments he's already briefed on this, is this is the right time, not just for climate change, but for the economy to be going hell for leather for supporting wind, for supporting solar to reduce that dependency on fossil fuels, which are so, so volatile in price and can be controlled by regimes, not just Russia, but regimes that we have, uh, say the least, plenty of criticisms of. And this is a great opportunity to say no, for economic and for climate reasons, let's move away from that towards renewables. And I hope and believe that's what this message is going to be this week. I noted, and I was listening very, very carefully, that you didn't say nuclear in that analysis. Uh, and there is talk about Sizewell C perhaps being paused or even cancelled. I think more likely paused than cancelled uh, in the, in the uh, uh, November 17 uh, budget. Um, and, and we haven't heard a lot recently about those mini nuclear power stations that we know are on the drawing board at Rolls-Royce, ready to go, and they can be put up much sooner. I mean, as a Conservative, wouldn't you like to be leaning on Mr Hunt and Mr Sunak for a bit more action on that as well? I'm certainly uh, supportive of nuclear. No, no objections to that from, from our organisation. I think what I'd say is we, we need an approach that says all forms of zero carbon energy are ones we should be looking at and ones we should be pursuing more, more aggressively. And I think nuclear absolutely is going to be part of that over uh, over the coming years. I think there are criticisms of nuclear not on environmental grounds, but I think the real challenge with nuclear is about how we can drive the costs down and make sure that it's not adding more to people's bills. And I think one of the real appeals of wind and solar is that actually they've come down so much in cost over the last decade that, that they can be a really, really integral part of, of, of cutting uh, people's energy bills, which is, as you pointed out, domestically at least the important challenge at the moment.